some Newtonian mechanics today, and we are given a mass distribution of four identical masses, each of mass 600 kilograms, separated horizontally and vertically by 0.15 meters or 15 centimeters. And we have to calculate the gravitational force on any one of these masses. So I have to pick any one of these four. I'm going to label them as one, two, three, four. I pick any one of these masses and I calculate the total gravitational force exerted on one mass by the other masses. So to make my life easier, I need to define a set of axes because after all, we're adding up forces and forces are vectors. So let me turn my attention to the mass at the origin. So I'm going to calculate the total force on the mass one. And the force on the mass one can be calculated in a very easy sense. Because uh, if I consider the mass two, then mass two attracts mass one towards itself with a force F sub two one, as in the force of two on one. Similarly, uh, the mass three exerts a force on mass one as F sub three one. And by the same token, mass four exerts a, a, a force of a gravitational force of attraction f sub four one so the objective now is to calculate the resultant force which is the vector sum of all these three forces since we're adding vectors we're going to have to add their uh, horizontal and vertical components. So first of all, I'm going to figure out the X component of the horizontal, uh, the X component of the resultant force. And as you can see, I've redrawn the diagram, but in a much more neat sense, because obviously we need it. So if you take a look at the forces in the diagram, we see that F sub 2 1 is acting entirely in the horizontal direction. So all of its magnitude will be added. And if you see F sub 3 1, however, F sub 3 1 is acting at some inclination to the uh, x-axis. So we're going to need its uh, horizontal component, f sub 3, 1 sub x. And obviously later we're going to need its vertical component, f sub 3, 1 y. And I'm going to consider this acute angle in the little force triangle that I've made. So if you look at our diagram, we remembered that the distances were 0 0.15 meters, correct? So because this force vector F sub 3, 1 acts along the straight line joining the two masses, you can make a right angle triangle. And the acute angle in this right triangle is going to be equal to the acute angle in our force triangle. So if this is alpha, then this is alpha 2. So I can use trigonometry to figure out the horizontal and vertical components. So uh, first of all, I want to know this angle. Uh, now one side is 0 0.15 and the other side is 0 0.15. 0 0.15 squared plus 0 0.15 squared. You take the square root and you get uh, 0 0.21. Yeah, so 0 0.21. The length of this hypotenuse is 0 0.21 meters. So if you want the horizontal component, if you want the uh, horizontal component, we see the horizontal component is the base of this triangle. And what? Trigonometric ratio do you, do you need when you want the base of a triangle? Uh, well, you just need the cosine ratio, correct? So cosine of alpha equals F sub 3, 1 sub X divided by F sub 3, 1. So you get the idea. This implies that F sub 3, 1 X equals F sub 3, 1 times the uh, cosine of the angle alpha. And the cosine of alpha is just the base divided by the hypotenuse, right? So that's 0 0.15, the base divided by the hypotenuse of 0 0.21. So the x component of the resultant force is F sub 2, 1 plus F sub 3, 1 times uh, 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.21. And of course, if you look at F sub 4, 1, it's completely, it's a force completely in the vertical direction. So it has zero horizontal component. Now to plug in the values and get some numbers in. So F sub 2, 1, F sub 2, 1, it's a gravitational force, right? So it's going to be equal to the constant G times the product of masses. Now the masses are 600 kilograms each. You know what? I'm just going to leave the masses as M times m, which is m squared, and I'm just going to use the distances. It's handy having a constant factored out at the end. So the distance between uh, 
1 and 2 was 0 0.15, right? So 0 0.15 squared. And uh, f sub 3, 1, f sub 3, 1 equaled, again, gm squared divided by 0 0.21 squared times that 0 0.15 by 0 0.21 factor. So I can actually t factor out a, a gm squared and then just add up there, uh, add up the uh, other terms left. So 1 by, again, I'm plugging in everything on my calculator. Um, there's a square there times 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.21. So that's going to be equal to 60.64. So that is the x force. Almost all of it anyway. We didn't cal we didn't uh, multiply by gm squared, but that's the x force in terms of gm squared. Now to calculate the uh, y component of the resultant. So I have a habit of calling them x force and y force. Um, I don't know why it just stuck with me throughout my teaching career. Anyway, so the y component of the resultant, which I also call the y force. Again, look at your diagram first. So sorry about that. Look at our take a look at our diagram. We see that f sub uh, two one is completely in the horizontal sense, but we will need all of f sub four one, and we need f sub three one. Uh, y component. So f sub 3 1 sub y equals the force f sub 3 1 times the uh, sine of alpha and the sine of alpha is going to be uh, 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.21. So the y force is going to be uh, f sub 4 1 plus f sub 3 1 times uh, the sine ratio, which was 0 0.15 by 0 0.21. And once again, plugging in the values as before, F sub, the F sub 3, 1 thing is the same as before. And this is gm squared by 0 0.15 squared. You know what? It, it's going to be exactly the same. It's going to be exactly the same as the total x force. So y equals gm squared by six uh, times 60.64 as well. And now you have all the required ingredients for your resultant force vector. So that is x, x cap plus y, y cap. And you just have to plug in the values of x and y that you've just calculated. And in case you want the uh, angle that the resultant force vector makes with the positive x-axis, call that phi. So in case you want this angle, then phi can be found by the inverse tangent of the y component by the x component. And they're both equal, so you're going to get pi by 4 radians anyway, or 45 degrees. So um, I hope you found the video useful. Be sure to like and subscribe, and thank you. See you next time.